uh, tomorrow you will all have uh, uh, a field visit can with my class and plant nutrition class so be at the lobby between 7 30 and 7 40 between that okay be there uh, and we will be back by prayers time and uh, tomorrow petang kita ada kelas kan uh, so after that kita akan buat kelas uh, petang pukul tiga lah okay Okay, it's a, it's a packed day for you and for me as well. Uh, okay, uh, so today's topic is biologically active compounds. Okay, we are not going to look at all the compounds. Biologically active compound, it has a lot. We have a lot of primary metabolite compounds, secondary metabolite compounds, metabolic compounds. So, there's a lot. So, we are just going to focus on protein and alkaloids, if according to your topics. Okay. Okay, so we are going to look at proteins and alkaloids. Okay, protein is a primary metabolite, one of the primary metabolites. Alkaloids is one of the group, one group of the secondary metabolites. Okay. Okay. Uh, protein. Uh, okay, proteins are the most abundant organic molecules of the living system. In a living system, there's uh, the collective organic molecules, that's the most abundant. Lah. They constitute about 50% of the cellular dry weight. These are all general things. They constitute the fundamental basis of structure and function of life. Okay. In 1839, Dutch chemist G. J. Mulder was first to describe about proteins. Ada lama dah, 1839 pun tak, moyang Okay, the term protein is derived from a Greek word proteus, meaning first place. Okay, protein are polymers of amino acid linked together by peptide bonds. So the bond that links them together are peptide bonds. I think you might have learned this in uh, form five. You have learned this in your what's that uh, matriculation and so on. Okay, <coughs> amino acids are the building unit of Protein. So, what builds up the protein is an amino acids. Okay. Sorry, I'm a bit not well. So, <coughs> amino acids are a group of organic compounds containing two functional groups. So, we have, if you see here, this is a organ. Uh, this is a amino uh, amino acid. It has two uh, groups of functional compounds. One is amino group. Another one is a carboxyl group. So this is what makes up a amino acid. This is a structure of amino acid. Amino group, you must have a one nitrogen with a, with a bond with a hydrogen, two hydrogen bonded to it. Carboxyl, you also know COOH. This is how the bonding looks, okay? The amino group is NH2. These two must be a superscript, a subscript, okay? Is a basic uh, while the carboxyl group is acidic. So you have to understand one is acidic, uh, one is basic, and carboxyl is acidic. So in most of the acid, you will have carboxyl group. So this makes it neutral. Okay. There are about 300 amino acids occur in nature, only 12 of them occur in protein. So amino acid, there's a lot, 300, but the protein, there's only 20 that builds up the protein. Each amino acid has four different groups attached to its uh, alpha carbon. These four groups are amino group, carboxyl group, hydrogen atoms, and a side chain of R, which decide what kind of uh, this R side chain will differ. This is the one that will decide uh, what uh, amino uh, acid is that, like proline, or uh, what, what are them that different right 300 different night and nine uh, okay so what what are the groups so the side chain will decide on that uh, so the body make makes 10 of the 20 amino acid needed to produce protein so in our body we make 10 amino acid the body can produce these are non essential you don't need to take from outside sources so like alanine aspergine Hello, yeah. Okay, glycine, proline, serine, and tyrosine. Okay, the essential amino acid the body cannot produce are arginine, histidine, isoleucine, uh, leucine, lysine, methionine, 
phenylalanine, tyreonine, tryptophan, and choline. So this one, the body cannot produce. This one, the body can produce. Okay. Okay, we are also have, um, they also have categorized amino acid according to non-polar, polar, and electrically charged. Non-polar means uh, it cannot combine, uh, it cannot be uh, diluted into water, okay, it doesn't react with water. So, examples are glycine, alanine, valine, valine uh, leucine, so leucine, and so on. Yang polar, yang boleh uh, dilute water, yang uh, aspergine, glutamine, tyrosine, and blah, blah, blah. This one have charge. You can see here, right? If you if you see it beat, at this part, it has charge, positive charge, and it has negative charge here. So, these are acidic uh, amino acid, like aspartic acid and glutamic acid. This one are basic. Arginine, basic means uh, alkali, lah, okay? Lysine and histidine, okay? So, if you, maybe future, maybe next year or the following year, you might learn this in detail sikit lah. Okay. Okay. So how is a dipeptide bond synthesized? Okay. Uh, so how is the amino acid are connected to form protein? So let's see. Uh, we read down here for synthesis of a dipeptide. Dipeptide means two amino acid is called dipeptide. Okay. Monopeptide is uh, uh, only one amino acid, okay? Uh, if like uh, polypeptide, a lot of amino acid combined together. Synthesis of a dipeptide when an amino group of one amino acid is linked to the carboxyl group of another amino acid, okay? Uh, apa ni? Uh, amino group, this is the amino group of one amino acid linked to carboxyl group of another amino acid, this is another amino acid, can a peptide bond linked is formed, a peptide lah. So, a molecule of water is split out when a peptide bond is formed. A lot of uh, formation uh, creates uh, water as a byproduct. So, this is a dipeptide lah, so it bonds here, okay. Amino acid can link together via peptide bond to form a polypeptide. Okay. <coughs> functions, nutrition, energy, and essential amino acid can possess anti-nutritional properties. Example, trypsins inhibitors in soy redu reduce digestibility. Okay, it produces nutrition. Okay, it provides structure in living organisms and food. Okay. Example collagen, main component in connective tissue. The fibrous protein serve as a component of tissue holding the skeletal element together. Okay. It provides structure. As catalyst. Okay. As catalyst, as enzymes, catalyzes chemical reaction in living tissues and foods. Okay. Uh, it's as an enzyme. Okay. As a protection from blood clothing. Okay. Involves the protein fibrinogen. Okay. Uh, the body uses a uh, use protein called antibody antibodies to fight disease as well. Okay, for blood clothing, for fighting disease, for storage. Yep, sorry. Casein in uh, milk and albumin in egg store nutrients for newborn infants and birds. Okay, macam anak. Uh, okay, uh, anak ayam kan okay? in birds and infants. Ferritin, a protein in liver stores iron. In case of deficiency of carbohydrates and fats, proteins are utilized for body. Okay. Okay, kalau carbohydrate and fat they run out, the next part, we all know what will be breakdown in our body is actually protein. Okay. Plants, these amino acids are produced by chloroplasts. Okay. In plants, uh, amino acid, the body chloroplasts, all synthesis of amino acids. Is we are complicated chain of enzymatic reactions in plant lah. Okay. So far, okay, Sma. Any questions? Okay. 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 Yeah.
uh, classification is based on composition, shape, and function. Okay. Simple uh, proteins. A protein that contains amino acid only. Examples are albumins, globulins, glutalins, albuminoids, histones, and protamines. Okay. So these are classification according to structures. Okay. Simple protein. Conjugate based on composition lagan. Okay. Conjugated proteins, a protein that have some non-protein moiety. So it is combined. Yani macam uh, amino acids are So yani amino acid plus with uh, moiety. Like it is combined with metals and so on. And it's structure along with protein part. Example are nucleoprotein. It has a nucleic part. It has a glyco part. Glyco means uh, it has a carbohydrate part. Lah. Glycoproteins. We have phosphoproteins. Hemoglobins, okay, uh, lecithoproteins is combined with another uh, component, okay, so that's conjugated proteins. Derived proteins are, these are protein derived from simple or conjugated protein by physical or chemical means. So when you heat them, when you add enzyme to them, when you add chemical reaction to them, so it reacts and it produces a new kind of protein, okay. Uh, examples are denatured proteins. Okay, because it lose the bonding, so it become a new kind of protein and peptides. Okay, first is based on composition. Now based on structure, so you can classify it based on uh, components. Now you classify it based on the structure. We have a globular protein which fold up into compact spherical shape. It's combined. It's fold into compact uh, spherical shape. Their function include biosynthesis, transport, and metabolism. For example, myoglobulin is a globulin protein that stores oxygen in the muscle. It keeps oxygen in the muscle. Fibrous protein consists of long fibers and are mainly structural protein. Okay, uh, consists of long fibers. Okay, and structural protein. For example, uh, Alpha carotenin. Uh, this is beta carotenin. Okay, this is a alpha helix. Okay, this is alpha carotenin. Uh, a fibrous protein that makes hair, fur, nail, and skin. It has fibers inside there. Hair is made uh, of twin fibrils, which are braids of three alpha helix. The alpha helixes are held together by disulfide bonds. So they are. Yes, what hold them together are uh, 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 disulfide bonds, lah. Okay, beta carotenes are um, fibrous proteins found in feathers and scales. They are made up mostly of beta pleated sheets. So these are pleated sheets. Okay, these are alpha helix, right? So they are bond together by disulfide bonds. Okay, go and uh, read further on the structure of proteins. Lah. Okay. okay, you can also classify. Uh, 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 based on biological function, you can classify protein based on biological function. Enzyme protein. Many protein act as biologically, biological catalyst or enzyme. Thousands of different enzyme exist in the body. So many proteins. Proteins makes up enzyme. Most of the enzymes are proteins. Okay. Examples are catalysts. Okay. So my is is ni protein kan? Uh, enzyme kan? So they are made up of protein juga. Amylase, trypsin, lipase and so on. You can uh, biological function as a structure, structural protein. Protein give up shell shape. So, dalam uh, cell memory, it has a lot of protein because it gives the shape, strength as well as enable movement. Example like collagen, elastin, and fibrin. Transport of carrier proteins. Okay, we have hemoglobin carries oxygen in blood. Serum albumin carries fatty acid in blood. Nutrient and storage protein. Different for different substances, okay, uh, as nutrient, okay. There's ferritin, there's leukemes, and beans in blood. Okay, contracting fibers in muscles. Examples, uh, dalam masa kita pun dia ada guna protein juga in building actin and myosin. Kita ada immunological proteins which is important for our in immunology when pathogen enters the body lah, like gamma globulins. The immune system produces antibodies against it that fight against the invaders. So 
all these things like gamma globulin that makes up the uh, immune system uh, but yeah uh, is made up of protein clothing factor okay blood clot activate uh, and make mesh of fibrin to stop bleeding factors one two three four five okay so far so good can you hear me Yes, doctor. Yes. Okay. Uh, protein properties there. Uh, proteins can also be characterized by their chemical reaction. Most proteins are soluble in water, in alcohol, in a dilute base, or in various concentration of salt solution. Okay. So you can characterize this. Tadi kita dah kita nak classify, characterize characterized by chemical reaction and we also know uh, proteins can are soluble in water, alcohol and dilute base okay of salt solutions proteins have the characteristic coil structure so you think of structure guys which is determined by the sequence of amino acid in the primary polypeptide chain okay I mean you can continue proteins are heat liable exhibiting various degree of liability depending on type of protein so it is heat like it, it will be nature with heat but it depends if it's a very complicated structure, then it will be hard. If simple structure, it will denature. <coughs> Solution and temperature profile. Proteins can be reversible or irreversible, denatured by heating, by salt concentration, by freezing, by ultrastonic stress, or by aging. Protein undergo characteristic bonding with other protein in the so-called protein reaction and will combine with free aldehyde and hydroxyl group of carbohydrate to form malate type of compounds. Okay, denaturation is the normal protein. It's really called uh, loss of biological activity. When it denatured, it lost its bonding. It, it is lost lah. And denatured protein and renaturance. Okay, normal protein. Okay, okay. Uh, so we have uh, alkaloid part. But before that, uh, I will take a break. Uh, in a minimum, I do. Okay, we get like five minutes break, then we continue. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Okay, shall we continue? Okay, I'm present now. Ya, saya tak boleh share pula. Aduh, cancel. Ah, okay. Okay, so we move to alkaloid. So, this is, uh, okay, that day you presented five different alkaloids, right? So that is part of your presentation and you have learned something. So uh, I'm not going to go in detail on everything, okay? Out of like uh, in secondary metabolites, we have uh, mainly three different groups, okay? We have, they say four, lah, uh, four different groups, uh, sometimes they say three. So uh, one is terpenes, one is a group of phenols, and another one is the nitrogen-containing compound, which include alkaloids so we are just going to see alkaloids okay the term alkaloid which means alkali like okay it contains nitrogen like it's commonly used to designate basic heterocyclic heterocyclic means like cyclic like hetero means uh, six cyclic heterocyclic nitrogenous compound which has nitrogen okay uh of plant origin that are uh, physiologically active okay they are active compounds. Other compounds like amino acid proteins, nucleic acids also contain nitrogen, but they are not alkaloids. Okay. Uh, alkaloids have diverse and important physiological effects on humans and other animals. Well-known alkaloids are morphine, trichine, quinine, hepadrine, and nicotine. Okay. In general, <coughs> a given species contains only a few kind of alkaloids okay uh, like both the uh, general one species only contains few kinds of alkaloids lah. like both the opium poppy opium poppy is papyrus seminiferum lah, and ergot fungus uh, each contain about 30 different types okay uh, Dia takkan lagi banyak dari 30 and then certain family ada certain things. Certain family tak ada langsung. So it depends on the family. Okay, opium poppy ada opium lah dalam tu. Okay, opium poppy pun kadang-kadang ada kita guna sebagai kaskas dalam masakan kita kan. Okay, certain plant families are particularly rich in alkaloids. All plants of the poppy family, okay, are rich in opium good. Okay, uh, papa some are rich in alkaloids lah. So, poppy family, uh, plant lah family papa rasie, uh, radicula CA, buttercups, solana CA, and emeralds uh, uh, lah. So, all these things uh, contain uh, rich in alkaloids. A few alkaloids have been found in animal species such as the new world beaver and poison dart frogs. Hergon and a few other fungi also produce them. Okay. Alkaloids uh, properties uh, contains nitrogen, usually derived from an amino acid. So alkaloids it derived from amino acids uh, as well. It contains nitrogen. It's bitter tasting, generally white solids. Exception are some like nicotine is a brown liquid. Uh, they give a precipitate with heavy metal iodides. Caffeine is the alkaloid, a purine derivative that's not precipitate like most alkaloids. Alkaloids are basic because the uh, amino acid mm -hmm. are the basic part, okay? They form water-soluble salt. Most alkaloids are well-defined crystal substance which unite with acids to form salt because it's basic. So it can act with acid to form salt, lah, okay? Occur in a limited number of plants. So it's not in all the plants. Nucleic acid exists in all plants whereas morphine exists in only uh, one plant species, okay? 
the concentration of alkaloids in plant is variable and is dependent on certain factors. So how much is the concentration of like if you plant something uh, that have alkaloids, the 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 amount of uh, apa, alkaloid too can differ depending on geographical region, climate, and it is, the characteristic reaction and their effect on animal organism is most often toxic. So alkaloid is, can be a toxic uh, plant parts. Function in plants. They may act as protective against insects and herbivores due to their bitterness and toxicity. So because they are bitter, they are toxic, they can Anything that is bitter and toxic, uh, bitter and kadang-kadang they, they give protection. So, okay. Sources of nitrogen in case of nitrogen deficiency. So, they are function with nitrogen. They sometimes act as a growth regulator in certain metabolic system. They may be utilized as a source of energy in case of deficiency in carbon dioxide assimilation. Okay, these are classification where you will see mostly a classification. Okay. Uh, I don't expect you to know the biological structure for now, okay? Uh, so, I will go through this uh, next year as well when you are taking plant natural products. So, I don't think so. I, I didn't give because of your second year. I don't give you a lot of importance. Like, let's go through just this one, okay? Like, alkaloid through alkaloids, okay? They are proto-alkaloids, pseudo-alkaloids and so on. Like, uh, through alkaloids like atropine. It derived from amino acids that have nitrogen in the hydro heterocyclic ring. So this is the heterocyclic ring, okay, which they put it in a 3D structure. So it has a nitrogen, atropine, and its biological significance is anti-polynergic. So tomorrow, when you're doing the field trip, I want you to tabulate something like that in your this in your report. So I do want more than four pages. So minimum of six plants you will be discussing. So you just put in a table, like at one column, you put what is the plant, figure of the plant, name of the plant, uh, what are the active compound found, like when you do the literature review survey, when you go back, and then what are the uh, medical or pharmaceutical or nutraceutical benefits, and which part of the plant contain that. Okay, something like that. Okay, uh, so you table it like this. Okay, you don't need to write anything. It's like a, it's a, like an easy report, uh, which makes more sense. Okay. And then proto alkaloid derived from amino acid that don't have nitrogen in heterocyclic ring. Uh, so it uh, from amino acid that do not have nitrogen in the heterocyclic ring. Like it doesn't have nitrogen. Okay, it only have nitrogen here, not here at the heterocyclic ring. Example: Texol. Texol is an anti-cancer uh, uh, compound, atopu compound, and digunakan to uh, against uh, cancer. It's very very expensive. The actual name is Paclitexol. Okay, sometimes they call it Texol. Used for treating ovarian, breast, and lung cancer. It's very expensive. And we have pseudo alkaloid, not derived from amino acid, but have nitrogen in their heterocyclic ring. So uh, it's caffeine. Caffeine is also a kind of drug because it's additive, but it's like uh, commonly accepted. Like nobody is going to come and charge you because you're having caffeine at your house. Okay, uh, it's antioxidant and anti inflammatory as well. Okay. So these parts, uh, I think, uh, you all can read yourself. It's nothing, I mean, like uh, mostly structures and so on. And I will go through that. It's like in third year, you'll be more into this, okay? Alkaloids, because alkaloids have a very diverse structure, their function are also complex. It can be a stimulant alkaloid, CNS, okay? Central nervous stimulant, CNS, okay? Like caffeine, like if you're sleepy, you drink that, it will make you more alert, okay? Some people are very, very hyper. Hyper maksudnya dia akan jadi macam very, very active lepas caffeine. And that's me. Okay, I cannot I cannot drink coffee because uh, to me, if I drink coffee, sometimes I cannot sleep for two days. I'm very alert and will be very hyper, very excited. Okay, some people, uh, they don't have at all the effect of caffeine. They can still sleep with caffeine and so on. Okay, some people, normal people, normally people have like a alertness. Like they drink in the morning. That's why coffee, usually people drink in the morning. Like kalau kat sini, dekat Malaysia, kita punya coffee tak pekat sangat. So it's still okay if in uh, Europe and so on, and I was there, they drink really from the coffee bean. They grind the coffee bean using the coffee machine and then they drink it very, very pure and very, very thick. 
Okay, which uh, mereka tak letak gula, mereka tak letak susu, which is like we we won't drink lah normally. Okay, but that is a uh, very very strong coffee. Okay, it's a depressing alkaloid. Like morphine is a depressing alkaloid. It will make you depressed. Okay, but morphine is also very good painkiller. They give to cancer patients lah. Uh, VNS, sympathetic alkaloids, cocaine and happy hadrine, sympatholytic alkaloids, hohimbin. Anticlorinogenic alkaloids, atropine, okay, gangliopelagic alkaloids, nicotine, spartine, androgenic, dopamogenic, or serotonogenic receptors, okay. Malignant cells can manifest cytotoxic activity, mean blastin and mean crystin. Like, and parasites are cunin, okay, against parasites, okay. Just go through that, only that. Okay, alkaloids are very toxic substance at relatively low dose. So, even at low dose, they are very toxic. They can exert their effect on various systems. Example, wind crystal has central neurotoxic effect. Okay, central neurotoxic effect. Wind blasting has a powerful leukopenia effect and leads to gastrointestinal neurological distress. Uh, Eclonitine is toxic to bulbar centers. Q9 and morphine lead to respiratory depression. Cocaine and morphine lead to pharmacological addiction. So these are the different importance. Okay, okay just that for this week, we don't have much it's just a continuation so tomorrow morning we have a uh, field trip and tomorrow afternoon we will have a class at three o'clock okay uh tomorrow afternoon uh, tomorrow afternoon because i have uh waiva for 191 batch uh we shall start at 319 will that be fine at 315 will that be fine yes okay okay then thank you good luck tomorrow will be the this chapter takkan keluar lah untuk quiz yang Yang I ajar week 8, week 9, week 10 punya topik lah. Okay. And simple aja, jangan beri. And okay. Bye. Doktor. Ah, ya. Yeah. Quiz tu dalam Google form ke? Ah, uh, uh, I can inform you orang. Esok mungkin I will ask you to come to class. I will book a classroom. Kita akan buat sana. Boleh tak? Oh, yeah. So, face to face lah. Ah, just in case. Nanti I beritahu kat you orang. Okay. Okay, face to face. Okay, bye. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr.